We're going to start with generators. So, and we'll start specifically with the AC generator. And an AC generator, essentially all you're doing is you're taking a coil, and it could be many turns or just a single turn. So, but you're rotating it in a constant magnetic field. So if I rotate a coil in a constant magnetic field, so what does that result in a change in that will lead to an EMF, an induced EMF in the coil? So, yep, it'll end up with a, an angle between the perpendicular and the magnetic field. Therefore, you'll get a changing magnetic flux. So let's take a look at my lovely loop of wire here, coiled wire here. So in this case, if it is perfectly parallel, the plane of this loop is parallel with the magnetic field, what is the flux through that coil? Zero. And 180 degrees later, it'd be zero again. And so every 180 degrees, it goes down to zero. And where does it reach a maximum? So at 90, when it's perfectly perpendicular. And so we're going to spin this coil around, and we're going to use some power source to do that. I might use water running downhill to spin the coils inside a turbine or something like that. I might you know, uh, burn coil or some sort of fission with nuclear materials to heat water up to steam and use the steam to actually so spin some blades down here and off the screen. So, but basically, just to spin this coil, I'm going to use mechanical energy, and the goal is to turn that into electrical energy. So in this case, as this spins around, what you'll find out also, uh, if we kind of look at Lenz's law application, so let's go through this first, so 90 degrees. And as I go from here to here, is the flux increasing or decreasing? Increasing. And so the flux is increasing. And so from during this whole time, which way is there going to be induced current inside this lovely coil? So in this case, I got the magnetic field pointing to the right. So and the magnetic flux the entire time after it starts and is non-zero is going to also be pointing to the right and is going to be increasing. And if it's increasing, then the change in magnetic flux also points which direction? To the right. Then I want to generate a current in here that would cause a magnetic flux that would oppose that. And so which way would this current go? So in this case, from this perspective, it would be clockwise, right? So, and clockwise up to here. So now let's look at the next 90 degrees. As I go from here to here, the flux still points to the right, but now is it increasing or decreasing? Decreasing. decreasing. And so up through this point, because it's decreasing, even though the field and the flux point to the right, the change in the flux is going to point to the left. And so now if I want to oppose that, so, and so in which case, which way would the current go now? So counterclockwise, and so it's changed directions. What we find out is that every 180 degrees, it changes directions. So it follows a sinusoidal curve, the induced EMF in this coil, and therefore the current in this coil as well. So what we find is that the EMF actually follows this lovely equation. It depends on how many turns you have. It depends on the strength of the magnetic field. It depends on the area, so it turns out of the coil. So, and then it depends on how fast you're rotating it, on the angular velocity in, at which you're rotating the coil. So if we kind of map this out, so what's the sign of zero? So at time zero, it would be zero. zero. And it just kind of follows this sinusoidal pathway. What would be the maximum and minimum values of the EMF? Well, that's a sine function, but we have this lovely big constant out here. So it would actually be NBA omega and negative N B A omega. So those would be the maximums, and it would just alternate back and forth. And so this is what we call alternating current. It's just simply a product of rotating a loop in a magnetic field. So Lenz's law predicts that the current would alternate every 180 degrees. Cool. Everybody cool with that so far? So that's simply what a generator is. This is the only equation you got to know as far as AC generators. So it turns out if you want a DC generator, you got a couple things to worry about. So do DC generators alternate the direction of current? No, they don't. It's always in the same direction. And so what they do is down here, you're going to have some sort of little ring down here. So, and as this thing rotates, so typically with your alternating current, you've got brushes on the ring that keep the contacts with the sides of the coil and stuff like that. But in this one, it actually is going to have some gaps. And that way, every 180 degrees, so how the ring connects to the, the wires here is going to actually flip as well. And so it actually changes polarity with it. That way, the current actually never changes direction. And so instead of looking like this, it would kind of go and then go back up again and stuff like that. So, th but the other problem, though, is that with direct current, I need a fairly constant current. 
So even if we cure this polarity problem where it just always is in the same direction, is it a constant current though? No, it's still gonna fluctuate. And so what they do is they don't just use a single coil, they use a number of coils and they use them all out of phase. And so you might have another coil. Let's actually get this new graph. So you got one here, and again, it's all in the same direction. And then you've got one that's gonna be a little bit offset with it. So, and another one that's a little further offset. And so all of a sudden, instead of having a single coil contributing to this EMF and the current, you're gonna have a series of coils that are all out of phase with each other just a little bit. And so that at any one given moment of time, if you average all those together, at least sum them all together, you're gonna get a fairly steady current that doesn't have too much fluctuation. So that's how they get their lovely direct current generators. It's a similar setup. They do something a little funky down here with the ring here to keep the polarity the same. And they just do a lot of them in conjunction with each other a little bit out of phase. So in this case, you could look at it as the, the rotating coils are a little out of phase, which causes the EMF and the currents to be a little bit out of phase. So, but that way, when you take all these numerous coils and add, them, add their currents together, at any given moment in time, the total current ends up being about the same. Okay, I don't really want to say anything more about the generators, but I do want to talk about them in reverse. Now, a motor does the exact opposite. So here with the generator, we had something mechanically causing this coil to rotate, and that generated an EMF and a current in the coil. But if we do the opposite, what if instead I pump a current, and I say pump, so but if I run a current through this lovely coil in the constant magnetic field, that would actually cause what? So I'd have a current carrying loop in a constant magnetic field, and it would experience a torque and start to rotate. So. And basically, the more current I pump through there, the greater it's gonna rotate. And if I connect this lovely rotating coil to something like, say, wheels or something like that, I've got a motor that's you know, causing motion in some way, shape, or form. So it's just the exact opposite. I'm now turning electrical energy into mechanical energy. So we do have a problem, though. If I start causing, you know, pumping current through this thing, causing it to rotate, you get what's called back EMF. And so notice, to draw current through these coils, I've got to have a source of EMF, a battery or something hooked up to this thing. So, but what you find is this, this thing rotates according to Lenz's law, it's going to want to create an opposition to the change in flux. And that's going to want to cause it to have an EMF in exactly the opposite direction. And so what you find out is that this back EMF, the faster you rotate this, the greater that back EMF is going to be. And so let's say I've got like a 12 volt battery. So, but maybe I've got like two volts of back EMF. So then guess what real potential I have to actually accomplish work with? Only 10 volts. So, and that's kind of how that back EMF works. Cool, I don't really want to say anything more about that either, but it's just a product of Lenz's Law. So I guess if you were trying to create a good generator, you'd be trying to minimize the back EMF? Generator or motor? Sorry, motor. motor. So, well, you're gonna try and minimize that back EMF and stuff like that, so, but you're kind of stuck with it with just the nature of what a motor is. And you can do various things to try and minimize it and stuff like that. So it also, what the back EMF is gonna be depends on how fast you're rotating this. It also depends on what resistance load you place onto uh, your motor and stuff like that. All those things factor in, but to some degree, you're just kind of stuck with it. So you'll minimize as much as you can in a couple of different ways, but at the end of the day, you can only minimize it so far. So let's say you've got this thing hooked up to a switch. As soon as you close the switch, so you don't have any back EMF at time zero. But as soon as the current starts flowing, and notice the, the current's not gonna initially be full value, right? It's gonna take a little bit of time to actually get to its peak value. So, and that whole time, the back EMF will grow with it. And so the back EMF starts out at zero, but gradually grows. And once your current reaches a maximum, your back EMF will be a, a maximum as well.